about ignition sequence starts. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Hi there, Post Processes here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine series. Today I will share some tips and tricks on setting up VDBs using Embergen. We will bake animation in Unreal, import this animation to Embergen, place our model correctly, prepare some simple shot or launch VDB and import it back to Unreal. I touched this topic very briefly in my previous video and a lot of people asked in comments about attaching VDBs, so I decided to get a little bit more in depth. Without further ado, let's get started. Here I have some simple environment which I made for purpose of this tutorial using Unreal Engine Marketplace and Kitbash assets. So please excuse level of details in this environment as it is not rich with props. For the purpose of tutorial I have created level sequence where I have made shot a launch animation. It is very basic using only transform track for keyframes of shuttle moving up. Nothing special, there are three keyframes for smooth start and launch. But also you need to add some mesh which will be an emitter for simulation. For cars it can be wheel or tire thread, but for rocket you would need something different, a shape that will be used for combustion simulation. So I have added two sphere shapes and placed them inside the booster nozzle. They will be used later for simulation. In order to attach them to the shuttle I have added them to sequencer and attached them to mesh. Here is how you can do that. Click on plus button and add attach track. Make sure attach is active for the whole duration of the sequence. Do it for each sphere. Now as you can see they start flying together with the shuttle. Let's bake transforms before we export FBX with animation to Embergen. Select an actor you would like to bake transform for. Click on settings here and select bake transforms. From drop down menu select bake all frames. Keys only option will not work for this scenario. Click OK. It will create separate transform track which will become active and every frame will have a keyframe for transform of the object. Your previous transforms will remain in the sequence if you would like to return to it and make changes. If you right click on this transform track you will see in properties that it is no longer active and will not affect your animation. Next let's bake transforms for our spheres too. Select both of the shapes and repeat the procedure. Settings, bake transform, all frames. All working good. Now we need to add objects which will act as colliders and interact with our simulation. We will set up collision later in Embergen with those objects. It's easy to do, you need to add objects you would like to be a collider to your sequence before exporting FBX. Here I have the support walls and launch platform. To add object to sequencer simply select this object, click on add track button, actor to sequencer, add selected and it will appear in your sequencer. Now let's export our animation to FBX. Select all objects you would like to export in your sequence. Launch platform, emitter spheres and shuttle in my case. Click on settings, export. Name your file. I will name mine shuttle launch tutorial. Hit save. Make sure collision checkbox is disabled. It's only for static meshes and will not move with geometry. Also, it's practically useless for collision in Ambergen or Houdini. For FBX version peak 2019 or higher, some of all the versions may not work properly. Click export. Great, we have successfully exported our animation and now let's jump to Embergen. In order to keep things simple for purpose of this tutorial I'll be using Embergen preset. It's really cool that Embergen has various of scenarios already made into presets so you can use them to quickly make some simulations. Rocket launch presets use really good to my case, so I will choose it. It looks nice and as you can see it also uses sphere as a meter. Let's reset it and import our model we just exported from Unreal. 
Drag pin from emitter node and choose Input. In File Path, navigate to your exported animation and select FBX file. Let's disconnect original mesh in the project and disable its visibility. We still don't see our animation from Unreal, because it's way far away from our bound box, but there is a magical button in Embergen. Scale and center to fit. Click on it and your animation will pop up in the center of bound box. As you can see, our geometry is connected to emitter and let's start our simulation. Oh no! Anyway, because our entire geometry is connected to emitter, all our models will be producing flames and smokes, but we don't want that. And that's why there are masks in Embergen, where you can pick what would be an emitter and what would be a collider. Select Input node, click on Mask 1 button here, enable both sphere checkboxes. That would be our emitters. Connect Mask 1 to emitters and forces. Don't forget to unlink geometry. And now only spheres will be emitting flames. Let's quickly change emitter activity on timeline and see how it works. Ok, spheres are now working properly. But our simulation doesn't collide with launch platform and our walls. Let's go to Mask 2 and select our models which we want to act as collider. Drag Collider's pin from Simulation node. Create Collider. Connect Mask 2 pin from Input node to Collider. Now let's see how it works. Yes, now it collides properly with our custom geometry. But our animation looks slower in Emergen compared to Unreal Engine, right? Because Emergen uses 60 FPS by default, and our sequence is 25 frames per second. Select Simulation node and scroll down to Time Control. In Time Step, set value to 25 Hz, which would be 25 FPS. But as we change our Time Step, there would be a problem, as our simulation will burst the same amount of fuel for much shorter period of time so it's all going to explode. Kaboom! Yes, Rico! Kaboom! In order to fix it, we need to lower fuel rate emission in our simulation. Select a meter node and lower fuel rate value. Now it looks better, but smoke weight is too light and goes up very fast. We can change it. Select Simulation node and look for Smoke Weight. Change it to the result that you like. Play around with values in keyframes, this way you can learn what each parameter does and you can set your simulation to desired result. I don't want to waste your time while I'm fine-tuning the simulation, so I sped up the process. When I'm finally happy with the result, let's export that as VDB. Select Volume Processing node and drag VDB pin to create VDB Export node. Give your file a name and select Output Directory. Select only Temperature and Density, we don't need flames for Unreal. Do not forget to select how many frames you would like to render. In my case it's 174 or 175, same to my sequence in Unreal Engine. Hit Export Now button and let it render. It may take some time. When the render is finished, now let's import it 
to Unreal Engine. Open Content Browser and drop your first VDB frame. Keep it as imported as sequence. For B attributes, set all to none. In G attributes, select temperature. Set parameter to 16-bit float if you would like. It will have better quality for VDB volume. Wait for Unreal to process this volume. When done, add heterogeneous volume from Quick Add toolbar. Just simply click here and start typing heterogeneous. I already have VDB material prepared. You can download by the link in the description, so if you don't waste time creating your own. Or if you would like to know how to make it, you can always check Winbush tutorial by clicking here or again by the link in the description. I apply this VDB material instance to my heterogeneous volume actor. Now I open this material to assign our freshly imported simulation. and reset all parameters to default values. Set frame rate for volume to 25, so it matches your sequence. Let's jump to frame 40 or better to 100 to see how it looks like. Obviously it's too bright, so let's lower temperature multiplier. Ok, now it looks better and already looks pretty cool. Let's put our simulation in place. Unfortunately, I didn't find a way to make it properly scaled for Unreal and you still need to adjust scale and position values so it matches your scene. The scale values are even not dividable by 100, as by default Embergen uses meters and Unreal uses centimeters. But proper scale value inside Unreal is about 25, which makes no sense. I will keep looking to make the way to import simulation with the proper sizing, but for now I will use transforms to fit the animation into the sequence. At least it is rotated in proper position and using the same axis as Unreal does, so it's pretty easy to align it with our collider in the scene. Now let's create animation for our EDB volume. Add heterogeneous volume to the sequencer and click plus button here to add heterogeneous volume component. Add frame parameter. Add a keyframe and make it linear. Set value to 0 in frame 0. Go to the last frame of your sequence, set keyframe here and set its value to 174. This will guarantee that your VDB animation is aligned with your sequence. Now let's play it. Ok, great, it works well, it aligned with our animation and collides with our platform and walls. I know it doesn't look like proper launch, for that you need to spend some more time in Embergen to adjust parameters, but it looks great for purpose of tutorial. You can adjust view settings in material instance to adjust VDB to your liking. And this is the result. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, I'm happy to answer them, I'm trying to respond to all of your questions if I have time, and also don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.